On today's episode of Hair Tube, we've got something really exciting. A great friend of mine has come down from Sydney. When you see him, you remember who he was last time we made someone pretty pink. So today's episode is going to be super, super cool. So make sure you hang in there. Now, what did the nut say to the nut when it was chasing another nut? No idea. I'm going to catch you. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. As I promised, um, I've actually got a surprise for you guys. So you might remember from a previous video, um, we've, we've made many a blonde go pink. I'm not sure if we're gonna do that today, mm -hmm. but um, back from Sydney is uh, my great friend Stevie. You remember Stevie? Hello. Um, yes, the last couple of videos we did have been uh, sensational, it's been crackers actually. So um, it was a bit of a surprise, he called me during the week and said, um, let's create some content, it's been too long, so here he is. So Ashley's gonna be our beautiful model for today. We had a bit of a chat about a haircut. Um, she's had someone previously cut her in what was a fringe or some bangs. Um, she's not really happy with how it's growing out, so my focus today will be making sure that the haircut frames the face and that she um, has really strong ends, a little bit of layering so that she can grow that out. And uh, I think I might have mentioned it in the last video is some things, some things always, well, some, sometimes you can see a client who maybe wants to grow her hair out and we don't do enough to it and it just looks like she's growing her hair out. But as I said in the last video, it's really important that we cut a shape into it so that although it might mean going one step backwards, it means that it looks like it's been intentionally done. It doesn't look like it's growing out. And I think that's really important for clients. So that's what I'm going to do in Ashley today. I'm done. Ah. Give all over to see. Uh, we spoke off camera um, what we're going to do with Ash. Ash really wants to drop a root. Um, she wants to stay blonde. I think that when you look at this face and you see this sort of blonde, I wouldn't, in a natural um, hair salon environment, I wouldn't straight away drop it because you know in six weeks, 12 weeks, she wants to go blonde again. So what I would do is I'd lighten it first. And I know it sounds a little bit counterintuitive, but then, um, and then return. So I, I'll do that then. I'll explain why I do that um, for a salon environment. But I, I just think that you know that this girl will want to be blonde, even if we drop it. So that's yeah, it. It's, it's very valid point. Like what Stevie, I think what he's alluding to is that we don't just think about what we're going to do today. We need to think about the next time and the next time and the next time. Otherwise, like you do something today and you create yourself a problem for the next visit. Yeah. And that's why Stevie's like, well, it's summertime here almost and we're not going to go dark. And, and we know that if, if I do drop it and whether it's me or um, one of the hairdressers in Adams, there's going to be a dark band and it just creates, that just creates a bit of a, a headache for everybody. Either Ash thinks that we're terrible hairdressers and we don't want that. So I think it's quite important as hairdressers mm. to think about what your next appointment is too, but also that Ashley will like us next time. So you guys are in for a bit of a treat today. Um, I'm actually going to take a back seat. I'm going to be spending a lot of time actually filming Stevie, um, racking his brain, maybe asking some questions, which will be really benefit to the colourists out there. And then you'll see me a little bit later for the haircut. So I hope you enjoy. See you soon. Okay, so... I'm going to talk you a little bit through, I guess, my process as I would uh, uh, as a salon, in the salon, should I say. So we're going to lighten um, Ash's hair and then we're going to drop it. I think some of the real secrets or the real sort of techniques actually will be when I'm dropping the, the root and how I'll leave a few foils or something. But when I'm looking at my guests in the salon, I look for hair patterns so we can see Ash's um, hair opens up just here. So I'm going to put a few foils in here. When I'm foiling in around the face, and I'll do it twice today, um, I, I sort of foil downwards and off, just so that when Ash puts her hair back, you won't get any lines. Um, and then what I'm going to do is um, I'll hero some foils, and then I'm going to um, drop a full color everywhere else, a high lift. Uh, and that way it gives us a nice blonde base that we can then drop back and create a really nice, violety, um, clean, super clean blonde that will really work for this sort of face. And I think knowing what Adam's going to do, um, creating shape, I think we're going to have this fantastic little violet babe. Um, and, I, and I really want that sort of blonde to sparkle. And really, that's what we're going to be looking for. So um, let's get cracking. And you can really see that um, really opens up there. So my first 
foil and I will come back through and just fill all this out. I'll always have my trolley on my left hand side. I'm, I'm trying to be as ergonomic as po possible. Okay, I'll just do that first one. I don't like how that looks. Clean sections. I also think that when you're foiling, I personally, and again, it's in a preference place, but I don't go too wide. I think that uh, you're putting a straight line as your foil on something that's round. Any time that you, on a round surf, um, circumference, or you'll end up arcing a little bit if you go too wide, which means that you'll either get super tight here and baggy up here, or the other way around where you'll be super tight at your ends and have a little bit of regrowth. So the idea is to keep nice and neat all the way through. Side swipe. I'll come back in and I'll just, I know my elbow's in the way there, but. Go high, you can see that that's not particularly wide. And I think it's a really good little tip for colorists because I think we all, especially when starting, it actually, if you go too wide, it makes your life harder. And I'm all about making it easier. All right, let's get cracking. And it, sort of when I foil, it's sort of a repeat. And I'm gonna go through. Another tip that I, I really believe in is I will always foil on the, on the root itself um, so you know where you're picking that hair from. Again, preference. Doesn't matter if you do something else, your boss does something else, your best friend does something else. It's just what I think works for me. I don't know if you can see on camera my body position. I'm using my quads, largest muscle in the body. This here, core strong. I'm 44 years old. I want to keep coloring hair until I'm 64. It means that I've got to use the ergonomics. I've got to use my body correctly. How you going, Ash? Get that all the time. Look who lost his crown, oh, 
I'm in your head, this and now. Keep trying to kick me out. You thought that you had me down, but look who lost his crown. Okay, so I've gone all the way through. I've done all my roots. Um, I will always, once I've done everything, go back in and recheck my hairline and my baseline. And I, I, it sounds silly and super obvious, but if you missed a bit in the back as a colorist, right? Do you feel bad? Yeah, absolutely. But if you miss a bit at the front, it's not only do you feel bad, your client goes, what are you doing? Right? So just triple checking the, you know, the front and the, the real hero sections, if you like. Um, it's just, I can't sort of say it enough, really. And this is ultimately, this is, it's, it's your work, but it's also doing it quickly. Faster, better, smarter. But you want your client to really like you, you know? And so it is about that. You know, I just, I'm, I'm gonna, yeah, trust, absolutely. And, but it's also, I mean, it's taken me Right, 27 years to be able to colour hair this quickly, right? And I want to um, give these sort of little tips because ultimately, you know, I've worked on the salon floor for 27 years. Just checking that front. I would then come back afterwards and I'll just maybe, I'll get a towel or a little bit of cotton wool, just make sure you clean up your hairline. Um, you can move everything off Ash's face or your, your client's face, uh, you know, if you purely so they look a little bit better in the mirror, because obviously um, people do get a little bit self-conscious. But uh, that there is a quick, thanks Ed, a quick way of um, breaking your base, like to lighten your base before we drop it. Okay, step one. Uh, let's just recap that. I have done a few foils, herringbone, not loads, and then I've come in and used a high lift tint. Now, I haven't put that high lift tint in for full development time. I did a slight cheat on it in terms of, I did my virgin application, because remember Ash's roots were longer than um, the roots that you need. So I did a slight cheat where I did the front, um, excuse me, from the back to the front virgin application, applied all the back, then came and did the roots. Uh, as you can see, I've broken that base completely. I'm now gonna do what I would call a super quick, um, I'm gonna keep a few blonde foils through the front, and then I'm just gonna drop the base. Super easy, uh, super quick. Um, it's gonna be fun. And I think it's a, just a great little trick in terms of get your base light and then drop it. Lightning yeah, hairs. For the lift, I mean, the base is fantastic. Oh, she's just beautiful. She had that sort of fine hair. It was it's a. It's almost, it just needs almost just the tiniest little adjustment of the phone. You could even wear it like this. You could. Yeah. Um, well, I, you know yeah, but absolutely. And, and Ash did say that she just wants her hair this blonde. So it goes a little bit against what we spoke about beforehand, but how many clients do that to us, right? They go, oh, I actually really like this. Yep. Uh, the colorist in me goes, no, it's a bit raw. I want to see a bit more. I can create a little bit of light and depth. Uh, but, you know, that, that's the, you know, our reality as colorists to our clients' reality is completely different. And it's about sort of aligning them, if you like. I'm going to use a little trick that what I'm going to do is some foils. Uh, and I'm just going to use conditioner. It doesn't matter what conditioner you use. Uh, and purely just to hold that in because that's what I want to be really light on the face and then the rest I'll just drop in and gradually um, have I got a clip on me yes I do there we go oh, thanking you thanking you thanking you pop that in there amazing and this should be quick
always think that when you do your roots first, it's then much easier to apply your mid lengths and ends. I, I find it just a quicker process as well. Whereas if you do apply your ends first, often what happens is hair seems to sort of mat up a little just bit. Just a, a recap, foils with conditioner. And really that sort of halo where we know that ash is gonna have that lightness coming through. My regrowth, I've dropped into sort of an eight level ash. I have a little bit of our darker base, that blue violet, just to push it. So a one level, um, I, I'd like to sort of say, almost like your, your fingernail worth. Uh, then through the end is sort of an, an 11 level ash. Again, with that little bit of the one level and um, three level violet. And, and the idea is to just create a little bit more um, gutsy toner rather than just something straight out the tube. I also think as a colorist, it's really nice to tell your clients. And if you're a client, it's nice that your hairdresser says, this color's bespoke to you. You can't go to another salon and it comes straight out of a tube. I've made this for you, right? And so, and, and really as a hairdresser, that's what you should be telling your clients. This is, a, this is something that they can't just go to the salon down the road. They can't just go to the next booth renter. This is really, this is your um, IP, if you like. And, and this is the color that you have created. Uh, 20 minutes, remember, trust your color. Doesn't matter if it looks overtoned, doesn't matter if it looks dark, trust the process. See you in a bit. Well, I felt a little bit left out there for a while because I've been sitting on the sidelines. I'm actually used to sitting on the bench. I used to do that when I play football a fair bit. Um, but uh, now it's my time to cut uh, Ash's hair. So I've decided to cut this uh, dry. So let's uh, blast it off. I'm going, to, um, I'm going to get some product, put it in, blast it off using a flat brush, um, and then I'll cut it here. I don't get too precious with sectioning when I cut long hair. I think sometimes when we cut hair, we can overcomplicate things by taking far too many sections. Might just pump you up a little bit there, babe. Stevie's a bit shorter than me. So we're gonna keep it long, but we definitely need to take some off. So we're gonna completely reshape this hair. So I wanna make sure that what is left is what I put there. So we're gonna cut out the entire last haircut make sure that we've got a, a good baseline so one of the things I say is as long as your scissor is sharp enough to get through the section without squashing the hair then it's either small enough or big enough whichever way you want to look at it so especially when we're doing baselines. Shorter hair, I guess it's a little bit different sectionings. It's not that sectioning is not important, but it's more critical to the outcome than, than this. So the most critical thing is that we're not shifting the distribution, that we're not over directing it, and that we're cutting parallel to our parting and we're staying in a rectangle. So as long as you're doing that and your scissor can get through the hair, then the rest is good. We're doing a one length haircut, so we need to comb. Just look up for me. Ash, please, thank you. We need to comb this all the way into the back and stay within the head shape so that we keep those corners in the front. 
and chin down for me. Thank you. Maybe a little bit more. Perfect. Always when I get to the last section, I use the wide end of the comb, not the fine end of the comb, just so we don't get pressure graduation on the last section. down again perfect when we do the sides can you just look into the mirror for me darling perfect just to make sure we don't have to worry about running into hand of there for me. Perfect. We don't have to wor worry about trying to do it here and running into the shoulder. And if we just adjust the head a little bit and chin a little bit more, then we don't have to worry about it flaring out over the ear. And again, make sure that we don't over manipulate it. There won't be much to cut if you've done that properly. It should actually be almost a perfect straight line. Almost is. Another way for me. Something I see hairdressers do a lot is rush the baseline. It's like it's the frame of our entire haircut, our entire canvas. You now they point cut it and chip it. That's perfect. There's nothing to take off there, is there? Let me pull that. It's out of the back. I don't need that. A mm, little bit. It still matters. That's our baseline done. You hear me bang on about triangles all the time. Well, no prizes for guessing what I'm about to do. So, Bree said she wasn't happy with this last time. Um, for whatever reason, the person who did it previously um, maybe didn't listen to her, but we need to fix it. So for me, the best shape to control distribution is triangles. And the reason being is because you've got a narrow point and a wide point. And when you push this back, you'll see where that'll go. You see how that travels over the top. So at the beginning of this video, I said it was important for us to make sure this doesn't look like it's gonna grow out or it's growing out. So we're gonna cut it back in. So it's a process of Explaining to your client that maybe take one step backward so that we cut a good shape in there so it sits really well and then you can grow it out rather than just pretending it's not there, it'll be fine and just letting it grow out because it will, it will bug her or him and it will actually, um, people will notice. It's like, oh, you're growing out your bangs. So hopefully I can do it a little bit better. The most critical part for me is making sure that the rear of the section where it's narrow is shorter than the front or the wide, the wide um, part of the section. So when I leave this like that, I'll just drop this down, not yet. By putting the short hair at the back and long hair at the front, it's gonna push in and it'll, in theory, if I've done it right, it should actually fall off a face without requiring any styling. So we brush this back. And then as we push this forward, that should just sit there by itself. Shouldn't have to even style it. 
Let's have a look what it looks like in the front. Yeah, it's already better. 100 times better. And you can see from the side, you can already see here, it's integrated into the rest. So if Ashley was determined and it's like, I don't want any layering or shape in the front, you could absolutely wear it like that. You don't have to um, add any more shape in the front if you didn't want to. But I think we should. So I'm going to do a little bit more. This one's a little bit different because we need to shift it to the back. And over directing or shifted distribution serves one purpose, and that's to over direct or shift the distribution to retain the length. So we're going to shift this to the back. Just chin up for me. Thank you. All the way to the back. So we don't cut it too short. It fell out. So this is, technically it is a disconnection, but because of the shapes we use, because we're using triangles, you can imagine that if you stacked triangles on top of each other with the, with the narrow end of the back, when you have it like this, although it looks disconnection because it's wide and it's like almost like a fish scale, like it's building up, it'll never actually really look disconnected, even though it is. And that's the beautiful thing about using geometries it works in engineering when they build houses and build buildings. So if you follow the same geometric principles when you're creating shape, it should theoretically work on this too. We're about to see. Let's have a look. So now the first triangle should be um, transitioning into the rest of the haircut with the second one I did. So. Let's have a look and it should look like it's you can see that the first one was here and now the second one is here so it's there and then here you can see that coming back so this is all about creating shape from the top so that here remains one length so now that I've done that we're actually going to use a graduation technique just to get some shape in here but want to make sure we don't cut these points out because um, it'll feel like it's cut back off her, off her um, chest. And sometimes clients want it cut off square so you don't get those points. But if you've gone to the trouble to leave them like I have, the last thing you want to do is go and cut them off because you've just wasted 20 minutes of your life. I, um, I really like those in the front. I think we just generically just go up to clients and just cut it on their shoulder and just have that haircut where you go into the back and it's just like rounded. So I'll show you how I do this. I'm just going to spin Ash around. Just head down for me. So you can see how I project this and then I'll spin around so you can see me cut it. Head up for me, darling. Thanks. most important part of this is um, projecting the hair above 90 so it falls soft. A lot of hairdressers I see, they, they cut it really low and they slice it and then they go back and texturize it. The simple principle is the closer to zero you cut the hair, the more solid it becomes. The further away you project it and you cut it, the softer it falls. So then I don't have to rely on using so much texture. It's not like I won't texturize it, but I don't have to um, worry about going back and breaking up solid lines all the time. Let me do a 360 so you can see this. So cross check it, spin you around this way. I always do this dry because I find it easier to find the markers that I need to hit so that it's more accurate because too often when the hair's wet, you just miss stuff. And it's just, it's easy to see when the hair's dry. So I'm gonna get this in here now so you can really get in close and you can see 
hell I'm doing this. Shut up, buddy. Thanks. So now we're going to, we've got our guideline for that. We're going to bring all the hair forward into that, into that guide until there's none left to cut. The most important thing is you don't cut into your guideline um, because you'll have to start again and that you don't miss where you projected it. So we have to make sure that we project the hair back to where we did. And the way you can see that is if I, if I project it down here, you can't really see my guide. Just turn you this way a bit. But when I hit the right marker for projection, you see it's very, very easy to hit your guide and it's just taking that hair out there. That's it. Simple. It's a stationary guideline. So once you've cut it, you have to take it back to there and hit the same marker again. Otherwise, you're going to end up um, cutting those corners out and you won't have any hair left there at all. So the last video I did, we did a similar technique where I actually took some hair from the top and brought it into the back. But we're not going to do this this time. This time we're actually going to still start with triangle shape, but we're actually going to go a little bit shorter because we want it to be bold. So when I say shorter, we're not going to cut a mullet or do something really, really sort of out there. It's still going to be commercial, but I want to accentuate a little bit more and get more volume. So I'm going to start quite short and we're going to make it quite acute. So I'm almost going to cut a straight line into the roof. You can see that there. And now I know this is easy for people with big hands and you can split it in two, but I like to do it all at once. It is one of those things that's very hard to bring it all back together. So I find that if you just if you're a bit patient and you comb it up and you find that guideline and you hit it all at once, it's, you get a far better result than trying to take multiple sections of doing this. So I comb it up to the elevation I want, horizontally. Let me go back to the side. Vertically, I'm looking in the mirror, which is to my left, just to make sure that I'm bringing the hair back to the center. You don't want to be caught bias to one side because then it's going to be unbalanced. I'll find my guideline. There it is there. Just see it in there. This is why it's important not to drop it. Make sure you don't cut across your cutting line because you're going to leave chatter marks everywhere. This is all about it being seamless. And if I've done it right, you shouldn't even be able to see that there's been hair's been laid. It should look like it's all one length. But when we move it, that colour Stevie's put in underneath, we're going to see. Back. And again, I'll do this in one section. So well, two sections, but one whole section on each side. So now we're going to split that center section in half, put one side out of the way. And the reason why it's easy to do it in one section, you can see how hard it would be. Like it, it gets knotty because we're combing the hair left, right, up. We're texturizing it. So short hair gets stuck in the long hair. So that makes it knotty. So for me, it's better just to be patient once, comb it horizontally, get it to the right projection, which is probably almost 180 degrees really. If the hair falls out, that's fine. It's too short, it doesn't reach there, so you don't have to go chasing it. Check head position again. Make sure we hit our marker and you bring it back to the center. It's very important for this, you bring it back to the center. I don't know anyone that has hair growing out of the side of their neck or their ear, and you're gonna end up with a big hole on the shoulder if you don't bring it back to the center of the head. This why big combs are good too. All the way back. There's not much to cut there. It's almost uh, already perfectly blended in. Just a tiny little bit. 
Same on the other side. I'm running this way actually so we can see it from a different angle. But if you're right-handed actually, we can't do it this way. I have to do it this way. Sorry for making you dizzy. I just wanna show everyone that we're bringing it back to the center. And there it is there. That's gone. And then we just cross check straight through the middle. So about an inch wide section. We're just making sure that we haven't missed any and that we've got symmetry. I'm gonna make sure it's balanced through there. So if we see long hair sticking up from either side, we need to go back and start again. You don't just cut them out and think that that'll do. It means that you've, you've done it unbalanced. No, it's good. Head back, babe. That's beautiful how it all flows. And then when you comb it straight, chin down for me. We don't have to worry about seeing visible layers because as you've heard me say in many other videos, I've lost count how many clients are asking me for volume, movement, but they don't want to see any layering. So this is how I achieve that for them. Let's have a bit of a look in the mirror. Make sure we're good. And we're done. How good's that? Love it. All we need to do is brush it out. And let's see what it looks like. Oh yeah, spin you around. Look at that. Where's Stevie? Come in here, bro. Come and check it out. She looks amazing. I'm just gonna get a little bit of smooth setter. So that smooth setter? Yeah, just, I just like to put it in my hand so it just pulls all those flyaways back in. But I don't put it on the top, I just put it around the hairline and then underneath. Because you sort of want the top to be a bit airy. You know what I mean? You, you don't want it to be flat on the top. It should be good, like, just run our hands through it. Shouldn't need too much at all. I reckon, Ash. There's too much coming in the front here. Let's get rid of that. Let me spin you around in the mirror so we can see. Styling's not over the top. It's just something you'd have every day. I'm gonna give it some height in there. I know that uh, rumor is they're gonna um, get rid of this product, but mate, I can't, I don't know what I'm gonna do. It's like, you know what I mean? Uh, I feel like LeBron James. Yeah. You know, when he's like, plays basketball, he goes like this with the, What's that stuff they put on the hands for grip, right? Chalk. Yeah, it's for grip. Is it just like weightlifters chalk? Or? I would, I'm, I'm yeah. guessing, I don't know. So this is gonna give us a little bit of plumpness in there. And that's it, I think we're good. What do you reckon? I love it, thank you so much. I really like it, you haven't touched it yet, get your hands in it. Just be careful when you put your hands in the top because you will get a bit of grip in there now. Oh we don't need you ripping your hair out. Oh my god. Still so nice. That's beautiful. Yeah. Oh my god. It is definitely uh, quite the transformation. Well, thanks for um, thanks for hanging out with us today. Thank you. Thank you so it's um, much. do we have to do do we have to do these ones? Yeah, of COVID? absolutely. Man, it should shake your hand and just use a hand sanitizer. But rules are rules, right? <laughs> um, yeah. I don't um, I don't think it couldn't done any better. I think it's um, the good balance of uh, color. I, and I always like how it's, the color's heavier in the end. It should yeah. go light to you know what I mean. Should have dark to light. Yeah. I think uh, we've shown a few quick techniques that you can use in the salon, like on how breaking base, just little things why you would drop it, how to use a darker toner, yep. darker bits. And you've obviously shown all your superstar techniques in um, creating shape. Yeah, I think it's, um, it's important to, again, acknowledge that the things that we're doing, are, it's not meant to be like, oh my God, like that's, I've never seen it before. This is just like two guys, we work in the salon every day, well, not every day, but every week we're in our salon, we're doing clients. And uh, these are the things that we do in our clients. So um, if you're a hairdresser out there, we didn't hide anything. It's all left out for judgment or whatever. But 
you know, you've probably seen it before, maybe you haven't. If you have, then that's good. If you haven't, then I had to benefit from it because I was sitting here watching Stevie do it and I learned something, so. <laughs> I did. Well, um, you're too nice. You know, you gave me a bit of a day off today. I didn't have to colour it myself and lucky Ash. I mean, Ash got to that. Ash got to have Stevie <laughs> colour her hair. It's a bit of a surprise. It's good. Yeah. Um, thanks for coming down, bro. Thanks for having me. Always. It's been too long, but um, maybe we can do it again. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments section for Stevie. Um, I'll get him to um, read them because I'll send him a link to the video when it's up. Um, thanks for tuning in again. If you uh, know anyone you think could share, you could share this video with, they're going to learn the colour technique or the cutting or the blow drawing or any element of it, please share it. It's important we share so people can grow. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please do. If you want to follow Stevie, well, you probably already do, but if you don't, Steve English. On, uh, on the ground. On, on Instagram, on, on IG. I think it's... Um, Actually, I'll, I'll put the, in the video about there. It'll scroll across now, so I'll make sure that you can follow him there. Um, and Ash, thanks for coming in. It's been a big day, being patient. Thanks, Ash. Yeah. Good crop top for those girls out there. Thank Best you. crop top ever. <laughs> thanks, guys. Take care. Bye. Boom. Boom.